गुड इवनिंग प्रिया मैम मिस सरिता गुड इवनिंग बिजू सर गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग सरिता मैम गुड इवनिंग ऑल गुड इवनिंग ऑल गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी आई थिंक सरिता मैम वी आर सेट टू गो राइट यस सर बिजू सर ओवर टू यू लेट्स इंट्रोड्यूस मिस सरिता Ms. Sarita Warrior holds a master's degree in economics from the prestigious Ferguson College Pune. She has done her B.Ed in English and Economics and is currently working with Nalanda Public School, Mumbai, where she teaches English, Economics, and Financial Markets Management. She is an avid reader and a published author. She has rendered her services as moderator for multiple occasions and is the chief editor of Transformers E Magazine. Hearty welcome, Ms. Sarita Warrior. The stage is yours. Please proceed. Thank you, sir. Are we good to go? Yes, definitely. Please. Thank you, Vijay sir, for the wonderful introduction. A very good evening and warm greetings. From all of us here at Extra Mile Education and Training, Extra Mile is a prolific training platform by the founder of VTAC, Dr. Abdul Salam. It aims to empower the educators' fraternity across the country by providing online as well as on-site training on demand. With this ever-expanding pool of resource persons and subject experts, Extra Mile reaches across to educators all over India as well as the Gulf countries as we go about on our mission to bring about educational excellence. I extend a warm welcome to our program director, Dr. Abdul Salam, our respective resource person for the day, Ms. Priya Murali, respected Mr. Vijay Espinle, and all our dear participants who have joined us this evening. It is indeed a pleasure to have each one of you as an integral part of this webinar as we go about learning more about active learning strategies and how they can be implemented in our day-to-day -day classroom transactions. It's a great feeling to be present here today, and I extend my humble gratitude to Dr. Abdul Salam for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Active learning is any approach to instruction in which students are asked to engage in the learning process. Active learning, thus, stands in contrast to traditional modes of instruction in which students are passive recipients of knowledge from an expert. It is a method of learning in which students are actively or experientially involved in the learning process and where there are different levels of active learning depending on students' involvement. Active learning can take many forms and can be executed in any discipline. Commonly, students will engage in small or large activities centered around writing, talking, problem solving, discussing, or reflecting. In today's session, our resource person will guide us through the ways and means in which we can go about making learning active and experiential for our students so that they not only enjoy the process of learning, but also achieve the learning outcomes. Before we begin with today's session, there are a few things I'd like to quickly brief you about. Switching on your device cameras is optional. However, any query in the midst of the session can be conveyed through the meeting chat box. In order to have an interactive experience, you may note down your queries and ask them at the end of the session. Priya Ma'am will be happy to dispel your doubts. Please click the raise hand button and wait for your name to be called out for asking your query. The participants will have the opportunity to receive certificate only after filling up the certificate and feedback form the link for which will be shared at the end of the session. Please note that this link is common for all our sessions and you may choose to save the link for availing certificate for all our future sessions. Kindly stay connected till the end of the session. I would now like to welcome our program director, 
Dr. Abdul Salam. Dr. Salam is a distinguished CBSE resource person and master trainer. He has been associated with NABEC, National Accreditation Board for Education and Training, Government of India as assessor. He is the founder and CEO of Extra Mile Education and Training, as well as BTAG, that is Bharat Transformers Academy Group. Sir, it is an honor to have your gracious presence this evening amidst us. I request you to take, to take over the session and deliver the welcome address. Salam, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sarita. Respected uh, resource person, Priya, ma'am, very happy to see you once again. And uh, BGS Pillai, our treasurer, Beta Global Educational Trust. Well, everybody, happy to see everybody on board again as we are continuously hosting lots of training sessions and we could see lots of educators are uh, availing those sessions and uh, Extra Mail is on its journey continuously providing all help and assistance to empower the educators. Well, today, uh, when you talk about uh, experiential learning, we have to listen to none other than Priya ma'am, because she is the right person who has even written a book about experiential learning and has won an award as well as the best book of the year. So on all your behalf, let me congratulate Priya ma'am on this occasion. Hearty congratulations ma'am. Thank uh, you sir. Definitely your guidance will be enriching us as you are the walking encyclopedia of experiential learning. So when you talk about experiential learning or active learning, that is the need of the hour when we are focusing upon competency-based education, when you have to get out of rock learning and traditional classrooms and put children in the real life scenarios and situations where they interact, they do and learn everything that is not inside the classroom, but outside the classroom, just like camping or field trips, whatever, all activities through which they learn. So that is through experience. So uh, Priya ma'am will tell you more about experiential learning and active learning strategies with lots and lots of examples from different subjects. Let's listen to ma'am and enrich and empower ourselves. Have a very good evening. Stay back and enjoy the session. Thank you all. Over to the moderator. Sarita, over to you. Thank you, sir. I would now like to welcome Mr. Biju S. Pillen, another distinguished educator with many years of experience in the field of education. He has served as principal in many prestigious schools. Sir, we are honored to have you amongst us today. I request you to felicitate the gathering with your kind words, sir. Thank you, Sarita, ma'am. Good evening, Abdul Salam, sir. Priya Murli, ma'am and all other respected uh, educators, uh, the platform of Extra Mile. A wonderful evening to see you all again back to the main topic. So as we all are were teachers in many uh, occasions, so we might have experienced how a uh, rote learning or a teacher-oriented class comparing with a uh, experiential learning class. So all when we were students also, at that time also, there were teachers who were concentrating on experiential learning and how we were concentrating or how interest we were interested more about to have such classes. So my humble request to all the respected teachers of various subjects also to turn over from bookish knowledge or from uh, teacher-oriented uh, classroom uh, situation to experiential learning so that they will learn by their own and they will enjoy the class. So let us uh, uh, learn more about this uh, and more tips let the teachers get uh, out of this evening. Let all the uh, teachers have uh, more more uh, experiential learning classes uh, from today's evening and uh, hope all these uh, uh, tips will help in their daily classroom situations. Uh, thank you all, uh, wonderful evening. Back to uh, moderator, ma'am, thank you. Thank you, Vijay, sir, for your kind words. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now proceed 
to the highlight of today's webinar. Today, amidst us, we have Ms. Priya Murali, who's one of our most prolific resource persons, and it is a privilege for all of us to have her associated with us on extra mile education and training. Priya Ma'am is a teaching professional with over two decades of teaching experience in schools in Madurai, Mumbai, and Muscat. Currently, she's serving as a principal of the Mahatma Global Gateway, Madurai. Priya Ma'am is a peer assessor for School Quality Assessment and Accreditation SQUA by CPSE, a lead auditor registered with the International Registrar of Certified Auditors, IRCA, and also a certified NABET assessor. She was the first person from the Sultanate of Oman to be selected as a peer assessor for SQUAF conducted by CBSC. Priya Ma'am has been awarded with the prestigious Best Teacher Award in 2018 by the CBSC, the only person to receive the award in the Gulf for that year. And as mentioned, Ma'am is also the resource and the author of the book Experiential Learning and a CBSC resource person for Center of Excellence. Priya Ma'am, it's wonderful to be here with you once again, and it's an absolute honor for me to be working with you this evening. On behalf of everyone present, I welcome you and request you to take over the proceedings for the evening. Over to you, Priya Ma'am. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abdul Salam, sir, uh, uh, Biju S. Pillai, sir, and Savita, ma'am, Sarita, ma'am, to, you know, uh, you know, so speak such kind words about my work. Uh, that is, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to present whatever little I know to teachers, you know, and uh, teachers shape the destiny of the students and we have to be active learners in the process. So in, with, uh, you know, salutations to our guru, may I humbly start the session, sir? Can I share? Yes, ma'am, please, yes, ma please. Can I start? Can I start? Am I heard yes, by all? Yes, yes, ma'am. It's visible. Yes. Ma yes. Uh, I'm not going to today delve on the because uh, Dell on what is experiential learning in depth, but I'm going to speak on how you can provide experiential learning activities in the classroom. What would be your strategies and how you should be going about it? But there could be some new uh, um, you know teachers in this session. For the benefit of these new teachers, you know, a small brief about what is this experiential learning. You see this brilliant uh, person, right? Uh, you know, in this. Priya, ma, if I may yeah. interrupt you. Priya, yeah. ma, if you could please put it on full screen mode, we'll be yeah, able to minute. see the slides more carefully. Yeah, yeah, one yeah, minute. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no problem. One minute. One minute. You, one minute. Slide on, yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, no problem. So, do you, you see this brilliant person, absolutely brilliant person, uh, Dr. David Call? He is called as, or he is named as, the father of experiential learning. He is a, you know, he propounded this experiential learning theory, and many teachers like all of us have practiced this experiential learning in parts in our school days when we were teachers. But when I studied this entire process, I felt that there were parts of the process which I myself did not follow. And now I'm, you know, uh, I have learned it and I am compelling my teachers also to do the same. Okay, now, according to this person, David Call. There are four parts of this experiential cycle. We, uh, you know, in any activity, okay, is supposed to be like a concrete experience that is given to the child. So you are doing the experience and having the experience. So that is one thing. Now, the next, what we do directly in India, I'm being very honest to you, 
we only uh, you know uh, give the experience and we conclude from the uh, experience the although we say oh we we do this we do that uh, the truth uh, of the entire uh, thing remains that we only do the concrete ex experience as well as the abstract con uh, conceptualization but we do not review or reflect on the experience which is supposed to be the most important part of the cycle. And the third thing, what you have learned from the experience, are you able to apply it in real life situation? This is what, uh, you know, experiential learning tells us to do. So there are four stages in the cycle. The first uh, stage uh, tells us that the teacher provides the students with an experience, number one, very easy. Then second stage should be to reflect on the experience, okay? Then third, what did the child learn from the experience? And four, applying the concepts learned in real life situations. This is where we actually uh, fail, you know, in step two and step four. That's so my humble request to all the very, some uh, uh, senior educators here, and there are many teachers, you know, who really give their life out for the profession. Please spend time on reflective observation and active experience, uh, active experimentation to complete the entire cycle, right? Now, let me go. Okay. Now, first important thing I hear. Now, what is the essence of this theory? I hear, I forget, I see, and I remember, I do, then I understand. This is John Dewey's very famous, uh, you know, quote. And uh, I am also reminded of this uh, statement, give the students something to do, not something to learn and doing it of such a nature as to demand thinking, learning naturally results. Okay. And then our own Mahatma Gandhi uh, said that we learn by example and by direct experience because there are limits to verbal instruction. Even now what I'm doing is a verbal instruction. But since your teachers, you know, you can be, you can note it down and you can uh, uh, do it in a better way. But even these sort of trainings, if we have it offline, what happens is, you know, the uh, impact of these trainings would be far superior. So fine. Then let me... Yes, one minute. Oh. Is it not moving? Yeah. Oh, madam, it's not moving. One minute. One minute. One. Yes. Okay. Now I I am I have picked up certain uh I have picked up certain uh uh examples. I'm going straight to the examples. Okay. Uh, which are even found in my book. And today I'm going to give you exactly 12 examples, which, uh, you know, are very useful to teachers and how they can implement it in their classrooms. Now, first thing, especially when you're teaching geography or not only geography, you are having a cookery class, you know, or you're teaching about... Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, consistency and things like that, you know, preparation of wheat dough from powdered wheat grains. Now, yes, how do, how do you make this dough? That, you know, and there are many takes to this, uh, what you call activity. Next, what is that we can uh, do with this uh, flour? Then what are the... Uh, different kinds of flour okay can you type in the chat box i think you all are quite uh, the same can you type in the chat box what are the different kinds of flour 
that you can make rotis with. Come on, let me see if you know. Come on, I think you should be fast at all this. Huh. Ma'am, we have maida, rice, wheat, garlic. Ma'am, ma'am, let them answer, ma'am. <laughs> let them answer. No, no, no. They, I'm just reading out the answer. What oh, they I'm not written. able to see. Okay, why? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, the, ah, these so are the sorry. answers that have come up. Ah, so sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. sorry. Yes, yes. So sorry. Yes, yes. So sorry, ma'am. So sorry. So rice no flour, yeah, rice flour, jowar, wheat, ba, you know, excellent. So now what are you expected to do as a part of an active learning strategy? Okay. You keep all these samples, carry these small, small, small samples with you in bowls, different bowls. Okay. Then ask students to, you know, make this dove. Okay. That could be one, uh, uh, you know, this thing. Because, you know, to make this dove is not uh, very, what you call, easy at all. So, there it takes, you know, sometimes water could be more. Sometimes water could be less, you know. So, that one. Now, next thing is they feel the flower. Okay. Now, this is, uh, these sort of things are learning for life. So, Feeling, you know, uh, is a very, very important aspect of learning. Then what are the uh, different uh, products that are, uh, you know, got from plants? Okay. You, uh, you can ask them, uh, uh, ask uh, the students about the different uh, uh, products got from plants. Then which state is wheat grown in plenty? Can can you please type? Can you please type Punjab? Yes, fantastic. Kanchan Joshi, fantastic. Yes. Any other state that you know of? Any other state? Madhya Pradesh, very good. Very good. Maharashtra, Haryana, very good. Excellent. UPMP already over. Okay. Yes. Yes. Haryana, Punjab. All these are states wherein, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, wheat is grown in plenty. Next thing you can ask, what is the climate? What is the climate where uh, uh, wheat is, uh, in which wheat is grown? Can you type, what is the climate in which wheat is normally grown? Come on. Can you type? Yes. Uh, hot climate. No, winter. It is normally go, uh, uh, yeah, normally uh, it uh, grows in uh, cool climate. It requires a medium rainfall, okay? And uh, when we talk of cool climate, 10 to 15 degrees, sometimes it grows, it grows even in summer with a temperature of 21 to 26 degrees Celsius. What kind of soil is required for uh, we, uh, growth of wheat? What kind of soil is uh, required for, uh, yes, black soil, but comes the answer. Very good. It's, uh, you know, why? Because it's a well-drained soil. And India is, uh, is it among the largest produ uh, producers of wheat in the world? You know, what is its position with regard to the wheat? It's not second. It is, Alina, it is the fourth largest producer of wheat in the world right it is the fourth largest producer of wheat in the world so when you i am talking teaching about teaching all this to grade three grade four students okay so when you are talking about uh, wheat you see how i have interlinked to wheat okay and then have a cookery session okay then uh, uh, you know feeling the different flour make them understand what are the climatic conditions. This is how your active learning takes place. Now, when we are talking of black soil, show them the black soil. Ask them to, you know, feel the black soil. Take them to a farm nearby which shows, uh, you know, uh, which uh, has used this, uh, uh, you know, black soil. You know, then another thing that you can do, uh, what are the different crops that are grown, you know, when uh, the temperature is cool? You know, there's so much of interlinking that you can actually do. But what we do as teachers is we just restrict ourselves to the boundary uh, of the textbook, you know, and uh, 
um, uh, 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 yeah, see this, madam, there's somebody who has posted about, uh, uh, you know, yes, yeah, somebody has posted one message, okay. I can answer. I've noted messages. it down, ma'am. Yeah, I'll answer down, all these messages at the end. Yes, okay. So I've noted this now. Yes, yes. So this is uh, one uh, uh, one such activity. Okay, this was one such activity. Then one minute, I go back. Yeah. Okay. Now the next active learning thing which I uh, I would like to share upon is this uh, one minute uh, to observe what happens okay when uh, when we uh, drop a leaf or a stone in water now can you tell me okay what happens when we uh, oh my god I'm getting scared when I use this one minute Huh. What happens when has, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. My screen sharing is not done. Yeah, I, I feel it's, uh, yes. One minute, ma'am. Again, I'll share. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yeah, yes, fine. So, uh, what happens when we drop a leaf or a stone in water? See, so you drop one leaf, you drop a stone in water. Okay. Now, this is when we talk about density weight and all that so you have to take efforts to show this difference then you make one leaf uh, you know uh, float in water make a uh, stone also float in water then you find the pattern of the objects that float or sink in water now link it to small weights can you uh, type in what are the different small weights that you know of? What are the different uh, small weights that you know of? What in terms of grams? Huh? Yes. Yes. Straw, cork, feather. No, 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 ma'am. I'm asking ma what are the different kinds of small weights they know of? Weights. W E I G S. Grams. Ah, yeah, yeah. Grams. It has come. Yeah. It has come. Grams. Yes, yes, gram, yes. Ma, microgram, milligram, and one, yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent. So, this is another thing that we are, uh, what you call, uh, expected to teach, okay? So, I am talking of teaching this not in your 6th uh, uh, standard or 7th standard. I am telling, introduce it right from maybe 3rd standard, 2nd standard, more uh, five to ten year old okay so link it to small weights so they know that uh, you know there is my uh, what you call milligram then there is gram then there is what you call kilogram then you can also bring one weighing scale to the class then you can take up you know uh, carry uh, some uh, you know potato uh, keep that potato on the weighing scale then ask the students to measure. See, these are strategies that will, you know, uh, facilitate learning, right? So then um, we have, when, after linking it now, here I just showed one example of the leaf as well as the stone. Now, there are so many examples in the class. Could be one rubber, one sharpener, one small broken pencil, you know, all that, you know, a cork, you know, all that. You ask the students to drop it in water and ask them to check whether it is floating or sinking. This is the first the concept that you you know need to teach so but what we normally do we just go we just say float float we don't even show them what it means to float we are we ask them to assume what is floating and what is uh, uh, you know sinking then when we are talking about sinking also you know one very brilliant thing uh, you can talk about that titanic that ship which you know submerged in the sea you know and lives you know, all this this is how you are expected to uh, you know uh, uh, connect to learning show a clipping of that uh, movie you know 
then generally it should be your learning strategies should be hand on, hands on and it should be supplemented with videos it should be supplemented with uh, you know discussions you know which uh, you know uh, enhance the depth of learning okay right now yes uh, yeah, one minute next slide okay another uh, uh, very very important it may look very simple you know and it may look very very easy but i'll tell you unless the teacher is very well prepared for the activity the learning will not take place it it calls for a lot of effort from the teacher now the next thing you may think what is so big about teaching covering of uh, what you call notebooks okay and what what is so big about covering of these notebooks then uh, you in our school in our indian school musket some years back maybe in 2013 uh, none of our students actually use brown paper it is you know uh, uh, we don't use uh, we didn't use brown paper from that year now uh, we did use recycled paper, number one. Then number two, wh what is the most important reflection is why is it not necessary or why is it necessary that we do not waste brown paper? That is the very, very important aspect of learning. Then what is the process by which paper is got? Can you type the first process by which paper is, uh, you know, what are the different steps, you know, what are the different steps? Does anybody know one or two steps which are involved in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, paper uh, processing? The, okay, cutting trees, pulping it, very good. Then uh, what else? What else? After pulping, what else do you do after pulping? What else do you do after pulping? Okay, making it into sheets. Okay, flat sheets. That's it. Later, rolling, pressing, drying. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. But I excellent. You all seem to know it. Yes. So the process on how the paper is got. So you talk about the digester. You talk about the pulping. You talk about the heating, okay? Then you talk about the washing. Then you talk about the filtering. Then you talk about the screening. Then you talk about the drying. Then you talk about the pulp. You know, I was lucky enough to visit a school in Chennai a couple of uh, months back. And they have their own recycled unit in their school, you know? beautiful uh, recycled uh, un recycling unit and so the children are directly involved in making paper so if, you know if we are lucky we use the process within the school otherwise what is the best thing is we collect this uh, we ensure that students don't uh, you know we make them sensitive to the needs of the environment now what else can you do now you can uh, uh, when this discussion takes place okay uh, you consolidate these ideas okay on email and send it to parents now you are not going to uh, sit and consolidate ask the students to consolidate it on email and collectively a mail can be sent to all parents about the discussion uh, that was had on using paper. It could be two, two lines from every uh, student, right? Okay. So, okay. Now, this is another uh, uh, very beautiful thing which works for, you know, right up till uh, grade seven, grade eight, okay? To identify fruits through smell okay what the teacher should do is uh, this involves a lot of uh, you know homework on the part of the teacher she picks up some maybe five to seven fruits 
with the help of the uh, school okay she asks the office school office to purchase these fruits uh, and what happens is during the science lesson or during the biology lesson or during uh, you know any uh, or suppose you are conducting an assembly on fruits what is the best thing to do is to display these uh, fruits on the table you know blindfold you know the child and you know keep the fruit right in front Absolutely. of the child's uh, uh, nose okay and the student must smell the fruit uh, you know and identify the fruit with the help of the smell you know uh, and the next thing that the student should i mean the teacher should do is uh, the, it depends on the strength of the class you know if it is uh, about 40 students per class what i suggested is you do it with two different sets of fruits okay so that students uh, don't identify it so easily and maintain a record sheet to find out which is i mean uh, whether uh, i mean which fruit the student could identify easily or which fruit the student could not e easily identify. At the end, after all the students go through this process, my, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, my humble request would be to show all the fruits to the students and consolidate the learning, right? Is it uh, quite clear, everybody? Okay, uh, the next one. one. The next slide is again another uh, uh, beautiful slide, okay? Fruits. Now, which of these uh, uh, fruits, uh, 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 let me tell you one minute. Uh, uh, to feel the fruits, from the exterior side of the skin. So again, here you purchase the fruits, okay? And ask the students to feel the fruits from the exterior side, okay? Feel the fruits from the... Yes, yes, sir. Not heard, sir? Am I not no, heard? The... No, no, ma'am. The audio is absolutely clear. No problem yeah. at all. So, no, no. I just heard some noise. That's why. Okay. So, uh, feel the fruits from... Uh, the outside that is very very important anything uh, linked to texture also you know uh, is uh, very very important so uh, mention about different color of skin, uh, skin colors of the same fruit now type in the type uh, chat box my humble request would be can you name some fruits with uh, uh, you could say multiple seeds multiple seeds many seeds ah strawberry custard apple jackfruit goa watermelon fantastic yes and can you uh, uh, name uh, some uh, fruits you know which okay can you name some fruits which have a soft skin which have a soft skin mango right papaya right Peach, okay, apricot, very, very good. G yeah, grapes, supporta, yes, right, chiku, yes, very, very good. Excellent, excellent. Now, uh, so custard apple, your kivano, lychee, and all have a rough skin, whereas you will find that fruits like your banana, your mango, okay, all these have got... Uh, all this, um, all these have got uh, a what you call uh, soft skin, right? So this is one very another important aspect that you are expected to know. Now let me go to the next important slide. Okay, the next important slide is this: uh, experiential learning involves taking children to go for a walk in the neighborhood. Now, I've purposely picked out 
these uh, pictures. Okay. First, what is the advantage of picking out these, you know, leaves which are lying on the floor, you know? First and foremost, one activity that you could probably do is to arrange the leaves in the order of their size. That is from the smallest to the biggest. Then uh, find out the size of the smallest leaf as well as the biggest leaf in the world, you know? So this is how you invoke curiosity uh, amongst your students. Now, next thing, uh, find out uh, are all leaves green, okay? Uh, why is that some leaves are not green in color? Why is that some of them have a different color like this red, okay? Or why is that some leaves are purplish in color? Is there chlorophyll in those leaves or is there no chlorophyll in those leaves? You know, this is how you are expected to, you know, you can take them for a walk in the park, okay, and do this. Then this sort of analysis of arranging the leaves could be done in the class. They pick up the leaves, they come, they place it on the table, arrange the leaves, okay, and then you can tell them the smallest leaf the next bigger leaf, the bigger leaf, and the biggest leaf. Now, where can you relate this to? You can relate science to ascending order of numbers as well as descending order of numbers, okay? This is how you are expected to link uh, learning, okay? Then, so, and important, you take them, uh, uh, you know, you should plan your lessons in such a way such that your uh, uh, climate, uh, climatic conditions also support learning. Take support teachers along with you because, you know, uh, taking children uh, for a small walk, you know, is you have to be very careful when you take uh, children on the small walk. And the... Uh, you know, you have, uh, the teacher needs to be very, very careful. And when you're walking also, you can talk about some stories which are related to trees, you know, which are, you can talk about uh, uh, the lady who was, you know, who just received an award recently from the president of India two years ago, who had adopted, you know, that uh, a stretch in uh, uh, Bangalore, you know, uh, you know, there are so many such people, uh, environmental stalwarts, choose it selective to your area, find out, talk about this, you know, then talk about green fingers, all this, you know, are small, small strategies that you can possibly do. Then next one. The next one, this is something pertaining to fourth standard and above to show how water changes into stream. See, now I started applying the real life, uh, you know, the, uh, the application to real life. You see, everywhere I'm only applying the concepts learned to real life. Now, uh, what we normally do is we just say water changes to water vapor. Water vapor condenses. That process is called condensation. When clouds become heavy, it precipitates. It comes down as rainfall. This is how we narrate this uh, silly water cycle in the class and I'm fed up of it, let me tell you. But to make it very interesting, what a science teacher should do is she should show this live experimentation in the class. Show how this, you can, uh, how this water, when it boils, it turns into steam, okay? This is, uh, and this process, what is this? Uh, process called it's called as uh, what you call evaporation okay so uh, then when the steam hits uh, you know another higher uh, this thing it becomes it condenses on it and it forms clouds this is a next level but this formation of steam how does it form you have to show it to them okay then how do you apply it in real life you can probably take some t-shirts, okay? Ask them to bring t-shirts beforehand, okay? And dip it, you know, in water. 
and hang the t-shirt also in the class. It doesn't matter. Okay. And after hanging, you know, you ask them to hang it in the class and uh, a, a few to hang it outside. Find out where, I mean, which t-shirt dried faster. You know, this could be uh, one very nice experiment that you can do in class. Then the next thing, why do lakes dry up? You know, some of these lakes dry up due to what you call extreme, uh, you know, heat connected to real life. Then how is the salt got, you know, how are these salt pans found? Which parts of India do you find this uh, uh, salt pan? Then related to the water cycle, then the formation of, uh, you know, dew in the grass, morning grass. Then what is, uh, you know, uh, uh, when you stand before the mirror, you find that after taking a bath, you find that the, your mirror gets filled with uh, um, what you call uh, small uh, droplets of water. Then you have a cone of uh, uh, Coke. Now this Coke, uh, 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 when it is kept in the fridge, for a long time and it is kept outside you find that there is some water droplets which condenses on the uh, coke bottle okay how does this happen then then when they go to this beauty parlors the mothers you know go to this beauty parlors you know they you know steam their face you know so uh, the steaming of face you can uh, speak about then drying up of these uh, potholes okay yeah, in the streets you know this is how you have to teach the reflection to your students okay uh, okay then the next one this is something very uh, uh, interesting uh, how tea is prepared okay uh, how can you do it you can do it in two different ways you can ask uh, students to bring this uh, tea bags, dip this uh, tea, uh, I mean tea, um, make their own tea in the classroom and, uh, you know, use it as a strategy to teach about tea, okay? Now, when uh, we talk about this, we, uh, we, uh, we also uh, uh, talk to them about India's geographical location, which is the highest tea producing state in our country. Can, yes, Assam. Yes, already it has come. Yes, already it has come. Very good. So why is this filtration of tea not required when it is done in class? Then what is this word called instant coffee? How is it different from percolated coffee? You know? All this it has to be, you know, done. Uh, you can even show the percolation of the coffee, you know, uh, uh, live to your students, okay? And yes, even Kerala is uh, extremely good for, um, uh, uh, you know, the growth of tree. Yes, very rightly stated, right. Now, one minute. Now, the next thing, this is again another, uh, you know, beautiful uh, thing to teach children how sandwiches are prepared. You may think it looks, uh, you know, very, and when we are talking about this uh, tea uh, processing, you can also talk about, I'm so sorry, I, uh, uh, I wanted to tell you about this, that uh, you can talk about uh, the growth of tea that is it's a perennial plant then it grows it requires a moderate uh, moderately hot and humid climate it needs about 13 degrees to 32 degrees and it uh, requires a well distributed rain of almost 200 centimeters per year all this and then it it uh, you know preferably grows in slopes all this has to be also a part of your you know uh, discussion and reflection. Okay, sorry that I missed out that point. Now, I would like to highlight on this how these uh, sandwiches are made. Okay, 
you may ask it looks uh, uh, what is so great about making these sandwiches actually experiential learning is nothing but you know imparting also different kinds of skills to students okay now so you experience the learning you know you have a direct experience of these uh, you know learning so now here what are the uh, things that you can do what are the different options that can be used by students to prepare bread okay now uh, what are the different types of bread that can be um, that can be prepared can, that can be used for the preparation can you please type what are the different types of bread okay multigrain brown bread okay roti flat bread very good okay wheat okay fine so very good very well done okay so uh, popular breads for sandwiches include white bread wheat bread rolls then there is something called as pita then wraps okay and what are uh, wraps wraps are actually soft bread that are very easy to make and can be used uh, you know, uh, to make many easy recipes. Now, what is this pita? Okay, pita is a family of, uh, you know, yeast, uh, leavened, round, flat breads baked from wheat flour. Okay, uh, so uh, all this, you know, has to be a part of the discussion. Show them, you know, ask them to prepare their own sandwich. You know, that should be a part of learning. Not just simply showing them one picture and, you know, uh, finishing off your uh, work with it. So here, see, you can you can talk about different bread types. You can ask them to prepare their own bread. Then you can ask them, uh, you know, uh, uh, what options they would like to take. You know, what is their favorite option? You know, they you can uh, 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 create a competition such as chefs for the day, you know. If you make it a collaborative or a group work, that is how you engage students in active learning, right? Okay, now the next one uh, is to witness the, uh, what you call, germination of the seeds and the seeds being transformed into plants, right? Now, uh, I don't know whether you all do that, uh, can you tell me which, uh, have you so, uh, asked your students to uh, sh uh, sow these seeds, okay? Uh, yes, beans are among the fastest growing. Yes, very, very good. Beans are methi seeds. Yes, very good. Yeah, kidney beans. Yes, very good. Methi again, very, very good. Mustard seeds, excellent, excellent. Yes, fantastic. Now, I also, when I present anything, I do a lot of homework before presenting anything to you all, okay? Uh, spinach, among the, you know, the quickly grown uh, plants include spinach, uh, it includes beans, it includes basil, then it includes radish. So, this four, five also, you try and show it for, a you know, a variety to students, right? So, uh, you can talk about the life cycle, you know, uh, what are the different stages in the life cycle, show these life st uh, stages wherever possible, what happens when the plant, uh, I mean, at the end of the life cycle, obviously the plant dies, compare it with the life cycle of a human being, you know, what are the different stages in the life cycle of a man or a woman, okay, this is how you are expected to, then you can ask them to stick pictures of the different stages, you know, and when they are doing this germination of seeds, at every stage, you can ask them to take pictures, record it in their, you know, album uh, notebook, right? So this is yet another uh, uh, strategy. Now, this is uh, another very, very important aspect of learning, how to prepare a first aid box, okay? Uh, uh, what are the things that you will keep in a first aid box is more relevant for the students 
rather than preparing the box itself. So can you type what all uh, will you, one minute, are you, I'm a little scared here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Band-Aids, scissors, cotton, band-aid, Dettol, iodine, cotton wool, excellent, ointment, adhesive tape, plaster, okay, uh, swaps, antiseptic lotion, all this excellent, excellent answers, fantastic answers. So, uh, spray, right, lotion, okay, all this is, uh, um, you, one minute, uh, all this is, uh, so all this is uh, yes, here, sorry. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So what are the different types of medicines and items which are found? You were able to, uh, I mean, type it in the type box. Now, what is that you have to explain to the students? What is the use of that particular thing? Where do they use this? Or have they used it in the past? This first you should find out. And if they have not used it, you have to tell them, where do you use this bandage strap? Where do you use this calamine lotion? Where do you use this cotton? Where do you use this gauge? You know, this is the sort of, uh, you know, discussion that should, you know, come out from the classroom, right? Uh, okay, then... This is one minute. Okay. Then this is another beautiful uh, uh, activity uh, to identify the seeds in a fruit. Okay. Can, uh, can you uh, please type what are the fruits which have got multiple seeds? Multiple seeds. Papaya. Fantastic. Smita, very good. Then a melon. Yes, grapes, jackfruit. Excellent, excellent. Gen C. Joseph, custard apple, strawberry, passion fruit. Fantastic. Superb. Orange. Okay, pumpkin. Right. Very, very good. Excellent, excellent. So you, what you need to do, you can have a fruit session in your classes. Okay. Get all these fruits which are having multiple seeds uh, or cut it open, show it to the students. You can ask them to ask these students to dry these seeds in the sun, paste it in their uh, notebook. Then second important way, you can ask the students even to uh, what you call uh, have a, you know, uh, you know, you can treat the students with uh, cut fruits of these types which were, you know, discussed by you, right? Now, yes, ma'am, any? Somebody's, somebody's talking. Okay, fine, no problem. Uh, now, the next uh, important thing, what are the fruits which are having uh, uh, single seeds? Come on, type mango. Very good, Preeta. Fantastic. Fantastic. Jamun, Jensi, fantastic. Almonds. Okay, Chiku has got few, right? Peach, pineapple, apple. Okay, they all have few. Okay, fantastic. Plums, lychees, cherry, right? Very good. So, uh, you know, mango, lychee, blackberry, that is jamun, avocado, plum, apricots are, uh, you know, mm, uh, fruits which have, uh, you know, a single seed. So, you know, open it and, uh, you know, show it to the students. Make them feel the seeds, okay? These are the ways to enrich your learning, right? Now, one minute. It's not moving. Sorry, some problem. Go back. See? 
I don't know. Scroll down. Under yeah, yeah, I'm trying, ma'am. I don't know why it is stuck. Yeah, oh God. Again, I came out. One minute. Wait, ma'am. Yeah, am I there? Yeah, I'm there very much. There. Oh. Yeah, I think it's paused again. Am I heard now? Yes, ma'am. There's no yeah, problem at all. One, one minute, I'll be back. Yeah. I'll, I'll, you know, share it again. Yes. Uh, that's kind. Yeah. So the next experiment that you can do with the students. Okay. Liquids take the shape of the container. Liquids flow easily. You know, uh, ask students to get uh, bottles of uh, different shapes. Ask them to fill these bottles. Ask them to show the, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, you know, to visualize or see by themselves that you know, the shape, it takes the shape of the container. Ask them to pour, ask them to pour a solid and see how uh, difficult it is to pour a solid or how easy it is to, you know, uh, pour a liquid, right? So, and students understand thereby the properties of solids and liquids when they relate it to this intermolecular space of the solids, right? Then... Okay. Now, now this is another very, uh, na, this thing, very nice experiment about feeling air. See, uh, uh, you ask students, especially when they come, you know, on a windy, uh, when they go out for the PT periods, okay, ask them to feel air or the best way to feel air, okay, one very beautiful way to feel air is uh, uh, one minute. Oh, huh. Am I out? Am I thrown out again? Yes, yeah, no, ma'am, you are there in the meeting, but the screen is, has just shifted a bit. Okay, one minute. Your slideshow has just shifted a bit. Yes, okay. sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, now I'm back, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So, you know, what you can probably do is you can uh, take a balloon. Fill that balloon with air and ask the, you know, and blow out the air on the face of the child. So, such a way the child can also feel the, uh, what you call, air. So, then uh, fill small footballs, you know, swimming floats, okay, with air and to help students understand how air gets filled in these objects. You know, this is, these are some of the ways or strategies. Then, uh -huh. uh, madam, if you give me permission, okay, I want any person, okay, to, uh, if you can give me uh, permission, asking Salam, sir, this is a very nice activity, okay. Can anybody speak, uh, uh, you know, about their father? Just open the box, ma'am, the mic for them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it will be very nice, ma'am. I'm just showing them something. Yeah. You can give permission. Quickly, if you could just prepare a quick extemporary line, a few lines uh, immediately and raise your hand. We'll be happy to unmute you. Too. Only and one person. Very, very quick. Only one person. So, and it should be a very, very quick activity. Anyone who's interested on your father? Oh my God, what has happened again? Uh, 
So yeah. requested to please raise. Yes, ma'am. I can't yeah. see anyone raising their hands. Okay. Yeah, Arti Arti Mahendru has raised. Okay. Ma'am, um, is my screen yes, visible, ma'am? Ma no, no. Yes, ma'am, it is. It is. The screen is visible. Oh, you I'm not. Oh, you. So, ma'am, can Arti ma'am be unmuted? Yeah, yeah, please ask her to speak. Just ask yeah. her to speak. Arti, yeah, Arti ma'am, you can speak. If unmute yourself and speak. Arti ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, very good evening to all. Can I speak, please? Uh, yes, I have yes, to speak on my father. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, good evening, all. My name is Arti. I'm going to speak on my father. So my father is the person who takes care of my family mm. and loves each other dearly. He's the person, he acts as the pillar of the support and the strength to the family. He is that individual whom I love a lot in my life. And I will always remember all the childhood recollections that I have with him. It's safe on my behalf of me to mention that my father is essentially the explanation behind my all the lovely gifts, all the joy and the happiness. He's continuously making all the efforts to give me the time to spend the quality time with me and catch all the current, all the happenings in my life. Yes, I would not uh, forget that day when he passed. Yeah. And it was a very, sorry? Yeah, yes, ma'am, go ahead, please. Uh. I cannot forget that day when he passed away. And it was a very unlucky day for me. But let me tell you my thing. I continuously feel so grateful that I have got the chance to be her daughter and a perfect person for him. Because he has shown me so many ways how to lead a happy and prosperous life. Thank you, ma'am. It is his courage only that I am standing on my feet and he has passed many good things and values to me. Thank you so much. Thank you for this wonderful, you know, uh, one minute speech. Okay. But I, I want you to, uh, you know, it was excellent, madam, because you never expected it, you know, that I would ask such a question. It was fantastic. We, you know, appreciate your efforts. To speak in front of such a you know big audience okay now what happens with children ask them to come with prepared speech to speak you know for one minute continuously is very very difficult for students so you know uh, give them a lot of appreciation you know give them a lot of backup give them a lot of support even if they forget there is no problem you know pat them give them the self-confidence you know tell them that yes you are capable boost their self-esteem now you should ask now first time when they do fine the second time you can tell a beta why can't you add a quote to your uh, speech why don't you narrate your uh, you know speech with a story now these you know uh, sort of uh, small modifications every time you do you know will enhance the quality of learning right this will enhance the quality of learning fantastic ma'am now the next one okay see here now uh the next one is something called as impromptu speeches okay and many good schools do have this impromptu speech competition it says, uh, uh, you know, just uh, they will give a topic and students are expected to speak on that topic. Okay. And it could be anything under the sun. My day at the beach, my, you know, the uh, uh, my favorite leader. It could be my first day at school, my favorite teacher, anything under the sun. Okay. And you know, all that you are expected to do. Tell them, you know, at the primary classes and all, 
to speak even five lines is very, very difficult, especially when you're, you know, giving them no time for preparation. So all that you have to do is to give them positive remarks so that at any stage, the students are not, uh, you know, uh, let me tell you, uh, they are not uh, uh, disturbed or they are not. Uh, um, is my screen sharing okay? Still, yes, I'm absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I'm not able to see the screen. Okay, I'll read. No, I think there's some problem. I don't know why. Okay, so it's, yeah, one minute. I'll reshare, please. Ah, right. Am I there with you? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 So, you know, this is another experiential learning strategy, you know, which enhances the confidence of the children. Now, let me show you. So I've got three more for today. Now. Uh, using currency. I bought some maths. You would have noticed I bought some science. I bought some environment. I bought some English into my presentation. Uh, you know, life without maths is really insane, right? See, first thing when they are handling currency, okay? Uh, you know, generally we talk about money which is used in uh, India, right? So you compare it with the uh, what do you call the currencies that are uh, used in uh, US, UK, France, Aus uh, then Australia, Sri Lanka, etc. So you could probably say that US, the you ask them to find out uh, what is the currency that is used, okay? Then uh, ask them if they could carry a dollar with them. Then show them the different notes. Ask them to feel the different notes. Whose signature is there in the currency note? Whose picture is there in the you know currency note? How can you identify a fake note from a real note? You know all this during your course of discussion. You know it should come out. Then UK. Uh, what is the currency which is used in UK? Sterling pound. You know what is its. Uh, uh, you know, what is one uh, uh, pound equal to? How many rupees is it equal to? Then next important thing, France, okay? Uh, what is the currency used there? Uh, Euro, how much is it per, uh, when we have to buy it in rupees, how much is the cost of one euro? 89 rupees as of today. Then this Australian dollar, how much does it cost? It's uh, 56 rupees per, uh, you know, uh, Indian uh, uh, for uh, every Australian dollar, we get rupees 56, you know, Indian currency. Then the Sri Lankan currency, it is 0.25 of the uh, Indian rupee. So you can, you know, bring about this. Then you can have a shopping. Uh, uh, we do practice this in our schools. It is very successful. You know, they can have a small shop. Uh, they can, you know, sell items, small items like jewelry. Uh, they can sell, uh, you know, balloons. They can sell some, you know, food items, popcorn. So when children come, they know that they give five rupees. Popcorn packet is only two rupees. So three rupees change. All this can be, this is an experience for the children, right? Then the next. And you uh, also have some very good insights from the participants. Teaching ah, yes. students the value of money and importance of saving. Yes. These insights yes. were really, really good. Yes. Excellent. Yes, ma'am. All this, we can you help me at the end? We will consolidate and we will speak. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes, Every ma word we will speak, ma'am. It's so interesting, actually. Yes. So the next one. Okay. The next one. Storytelling. This, again, very, very beautiful form of experiential learning using puppets. Okay. So one child could be a pig. One child could be a giraffe. One child could be a turtle. One child, you know, and teach them to make these simple puppets in the class. Okay. Then next, uh, uh, first time, probably you can write the story. Next time, 
you can ask them, ask the students to write the story, then narrate the story, make the puppets and use the puppets, you know, see the modifications that you can do for the same. And my last slide for today, because I, uh, yeah, and this is another very, in one minute, uh, yeah, one minute. One. Yeah, many schools don't do it, but I feel very sad when schools don't do this. In turn, students should be a part of the sales in the school canteen. Okay, many schools openly, I tell you, many schools don't because some of these parents think that it is below their dignity to, you know, enable their children to. Uh, you know, sell things in the school canteen. No, but it is a very good form of experiential learning exercise. Now, it is not only linked to money, okay? And please remember, all children will not be good at academics. So all these things, you know, see, it could probably teach the children how to manage money, how to handle people. You know, these are small skills of life. You know, asking people to stand in a line also is a big uh, problem in India, right? So uh, that is the thing. Then uh, to see uh, how many, uh, um, uh, which item gets sold out fast, which item does not get sold out fast, what has been the, uh, you know, uh, special order for the day you know we, how many teachers came and purchased from the school canteen you know what sort of service do the teachers expect what sort of service do uh, students expect all this could form a uh, you know part of the analysis for experiential learning so my humble uh, 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 my dear uh, teachers uh, you know with uh, Humility, you know, I bow down to you all. Please try these strategies in the classroom. You know, somehow, even if your <laughs> supervisors don't agree to it, you should find some way to, you know, uh, uh, to implement these strategies in the classroom in a direct way or in an indirect way, you know, so that students are truly benefited out of the exercise. And Salam, sir. Today, I have given only 12 strategies. If you give me uh, you know, uh, maybe another four sessions spread over four or five months, I can give all the contents of my book to all these teachers and I'll be very proud about that too so that all my strategies can be used in the classrooms. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry. Sir, sir, look, sir is busy with the phone call. I believe I'll convey this message that yes, you would yes. like to have spread over four sessions. I'll do yes. this. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Now, kind. can I? Yeah. Tell me, ma'am. Now, uh, uh, I'm through with my session. Yeah. yeah. So, how yes, do you do? How, how can I take questions, ma'am? Uh, thank you, ma'am. The session was indeed informative. Participants, we are open for questions. If mm -hmm. any one of you would like to raise your hand and Ask a query or clarify something with Priyama. She'd be happy to dispel your doubts. Participants, you may raise your hand. Hmm. Ma'am, there was a question in the chat box. Yeah, tell I'll me. just read it out for you. Hmm. Uh, one of the educators said, I love to see my class engage in active learning. But the challenges I face is that I can do these kind of activities in one or two classes per day, but it's mm. not possible for all six periods a day. So mm. please guide me to manage the resources as well as my energy. Yeah, very good. Very good question. And I'm sure, can we identify who that teacher is? Because I would like to know whether the teacher is handling multiple subjects per day. I mean, multiple classes per day. Can you check, ma'am? Who that person? I just is. check if uh I just read out your question, ma'am. If and if you're still there in the session, if you could please guide me so that I don't have to go okay. back. If you could uh, please, okay, yeah. I can uh, handle it in a different yeah, way. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, it's Saba Khalid. Saba Khalid, ma'am. She yeah. just responded. Saba hmm. Khalid, ma'am. Yeah. Can you 
open she's the a math teacher she's yeah, a math fine. teacher math yeah uh, madam can i can you put that uh, can uh, the mic be on for her please yeah sabha ma'am could you please raise your hand so that we can unmute you Ms. Rekha Kapoor has raised her yeah. hand. In the meanwhile, Rekha Kapoor, ma'am, can be unmuted. Yeah. Can you ask? Madam, what is her yes, question? Yes, ma'am, you can speak. Uh, yes, ma'am, Rekha, ma'am, please. Ma'am, I want to know what is the name of your book and yeah. where it is available. Yeah. Uh, so it will benefit all of us. Yes. See, you... it's named as Experiential Learning. Okay. And, uh, of course, you know, it's there in the... Uh, it's available for sale in Amazon. Okay, and, uh, and that's it. It's, uh, my name would also be Experiential Learning by Priya Murali. Yes, that's all. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Sabha, ma'am, is here. She can, yeah. uh, we can, unmute yeah. her. can you Sabha, please? You may unmute. You may unmute. We'll, yeah, please. Thank you, ma'am. Hmm. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, am I hearable? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, ma'am. My question is that I love to see my students engage in the active learning, but uh, uh, it's a uh, challenge for me to uh, uh, manage the resources for all the consecutive. If I am having six or seven consecutive yeah. periods, my first because, question to you is: yeah, Which are the classes that you teach? Sorry. Which are the classes that you teach? It's, are you uh, currently it's grade two and three. Oh, grade two and three. Fine. Okay. And ah. maths for. Maths. You're teaching maths for grade two and you're teaching maths for grade three, correct? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. It's ah. okay. So it's sometimes uh, hard for me to manage the resources as well as like for every uh, fi five periods a week, every class or six periods a day, it's very uh, hard for me. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, ask from you that is there a tip or is there anything I can do to manage my energy also because after one this type of learning takes the teacher to be more active more in, yes, um, very uh, correct. energetic very, very correct. Very so correct. after two or three periods I feel that my energy is drained my energy level is not like the class I had taken in the morning at mm -hmm. after 12 my energy level will not be the same so yeah. is there anything i can do to manage the energy my energy also and the resources are also not uh, like so readily available yes fine i'll tell you two tips i'll give you two tips planning yeah. is the first key to this uh, sort of learning okay planning mm -hmm. absolute yeah. planning now I know I have to do, and you cannot do all six periods of experiential learning. Please understand. You, what you do, standard two, suppose you are doing today, you do yeah. only for standard two today. If you are, uh, the next day you do for standard three and all your activities cannot be experiential learning activities. Please understand that. That is a, yeah. the most difficult concepts and wherever you can apply See, I have given today about 12 concepts. You would have noticed, okay? Yeah. Now, these concepts, see where you can apply all your entire lesson cannot be experiential learning, okay? So, wherever possible. So, you choose where experiential learning has to take place. It could be for, uh, you know, two concepts a lesson, okay? Now, two concepts a lesson could be maybe for four to five periods, okay? which yeah. could be spread throughout the week. So if I am having mathematics, uh, daily you will have two periods at least for grade two, if I am right. Yeah, in different yes. sections. Huh? Like yes. Two, yes, correct. Eight, so what eight. you do, you spread that uh, work throughout the entire week. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then you help the student. You spread it out throughout the entire week so that your resource management also is taken care of number one then yeah and energy level madam is all in the mind i will not say that energy level is dependent on anybody energy if i feel i can do it i will do it so it is all in the mind you start off with uh, positive thoughts tell to yourself that you are the best teacher tell to yourself that you are going to make a difference in the life of the students you know, today nobody will believe. I have gone to school. Uh, sir, I went to school maybe at 8. I came back maybe uh, 
uh, I had a session with my students. I came back only at 3.30 and I was uh, ready for the session yesterday itself. But I came, I revised all the slides uh, from maybe 4.30. I was revising all these slides. Okay. So everything is in the mind. If you want to give in your best, it is in the mind. And I'm sure that you're going to give in your best. Because I'll tell you another thing, which I always tell to my teachers. Everybody cannot be a teacher. And this uh, profession is given to you by God. So you are the messenger of God. So believe that you are the Saraswati who is here to give uh, knowledge to your students. And I'm sure you're going to do your best. Inshallah, ma'am. I'll try my best. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, madam. Uh, do we have any more questions? Any more questions, participants? Uh, sir, I can't see any more hands. Are we good to wind up? Yes. Salam, sir. Yes, we can wait up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Priya, ma'am. Yes. Ma uh, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude and appreciation for you. You have broadened our horizons and guided us through numerous ways to make learning more active and enjoyable for our children. I'm sure the strategy suggested by you will go a long way for us in achieving our goals in education. My takeaways from this session are that active learning paves way for lifelong learning and that it is essentially multidisciplinary in nature. It can't be, learning can never be done in isolation. It has to be done in collaboration, keeping in mind the subjects, physical, emotional, and psychological needs of the children. So thank you so much for this insightful session. And the chat box is full of appreciation and uh, gratitude that our dear participants have expressed. Uh, so thank you so much once again. Dear participants, kindly know that the certificate and the feedback link have already been posted. I requested to fill up the form with all the necessary details. I, Sarita, along with all of us here at Extra Mile, would like to thank Priya Ma'am once again for her gracious presence and an enriching experience. I would also like to thank Dr. Abdul Salam for his magnanimous support and guidance as always. And most importantly, thank you, dear participants, for your enthusiasm and active participation. At the point of time, it was difficult for me to keep track of all those chats that kept popping up on the chat box. And thank you so much for that. It means a lot to us. I sincerely hope that the session has been a fruitful and enjoyable experience for all of you. Thank you once again. Over to you, Salam, sir, please, for concluding the session. Ms. Pranjali wants to speak. I think she has raised her hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pranjali, ma'am, would you, you can unmute. Pranjali, ma'am, I'm so sorry, I didn't see it. Pranjali, ma'am, you may unmute yourself. Yes, Pajdiman, you are, you can unmute. There was a message that the certificate link is not active. Uh, I have checked it on my side. It is not active. Yeah, yeah, please please speak somebody yes, Pajdiman. Yes, Pajdiman. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Ma'am, audible, please. Pardon us. You are not, that was not clear, Pajdiman. Ma'am, attendance, please, please. Attendance link. Uh, okay. It has been posted. Uh, Salam, sir, may I request you to please post it once again or I'll do it. Uh, I'll post it. Pranjali, ma'am, I'll post it once again. It's there for everyone. I've done so. Posted, posted. Yes, it's done. Posted. It's done. It's done. Salam, sir, maybe please wind up now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Sarida. And uh, as usual, uh, you know, we always uh, have the best sessions from Priya ma'am because of the hard work madam is doing. The excellent planning and a uh, lot of, you know, uh, time and energy is spent on uh, such sessions. So that is, uh, it's great. I, I, I don't have any other words to describe. So thank you so much ma'am from the bottom of, from bottom of my heart. So it's wonderful that you are giving us, uh, you know, lots and lots of real life experiences and uh, your dedication is, you know, amazing. Thank you so much once again for this wonderful session. Lots of takeaways, very active learning was taking place. And, uh, you know, 
participants were engaged in interacting with the resource person i always tell the resource persons that it should be a very interactive the otherwise it will become very passive so thank you so much uh, priya ma'am we thank expect you, we expect the same energy level and much more Are you know, to learn from you in the coming sessions Sir, and uh, i just have one request yeah. uh, i have shared about 12 strategies today uh, so uh you know in my book i have written about 101 strategies i would like to in you know in parts give to these teachers so whenever you tell i would probably share it with them no we can say share the slide yeah yeah this you can share sir yeah. i'm talking of the subsequent sessions correct 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 i want them to get the full book in through my presentation you know okay okay definitely yeah. definitely yeah. thank that's you so the much purpose yeah. of writing you know that's the purpose of writing yes 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 All right, ma'am. Looking yeah, forward to. Thank you to... so much, sir. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, Sarita, ma'am. You know, for thank wonderful campus. <laughs> and Biju, sir. Uh, thank you. Biju, sir, has gone. I think. Yeah. Another yeah. fine, very fine person. And uh, thank you to all the participants. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Thank you, ma'am. Looking forward to another wonderful session next yeah. month. Right. Yeah. Right, sir. We'll do. We'll do. Both Saturdays reserved for you. Oh, okay, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. sir. Ida, ma'am. Yes. Good Thank night, you, everybody. Good night. Bye. Yeah. Bye, ma'am. Bye, you, everybody. Thank you, sir. And uh, I will be displaying the QR code as some are using, many are using the same mobile device. They cannot scan it, so I will be displaying it.